Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy. I usually make sex education videos, but not today, because this is the first video in my new flat, uh, which I have bought. This isn't the finished background. Uh, this is a temporary background. Um, there's a few things which I absolutely need to sort out before I go too much further. The first thing I need to do is get some curtains. Uh, it's not too bad because there's nobody in the building opposite because they're gonna knock it down in the next month or so, which will be nice because it's an eyesore at the moment. So there's nobody can see in as such, but you know, on the other hand, always good to have curtains. So just in case you don't wanna scare the children at the school just down the road. You know, and there's obviously a few other things which I need to do. A lot of it I've been trying to do over the last few weeks, hence why there's been no videos, uh, but I'm back. So by popular demand, my first video is gonna be how I bought a flat in London. I say pop and demand because I actually asked this on Twitter and 100% of the people who responded to the poll said yes. And it wasn't just one person either. So <laughs> therefore it must be popular. I'm gonna put this video out. Now, firstly, this is a bit of a story. Uh, this is my experience of buying a flat in London. Uh, obviously not everybody will have the same experience nor would you expect them to, but I am not a solicitor. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving you advice here. I'm just trying to give you some facts and how my experience of buying the flat uh, went. So firstly, this flat isn't, it's not in central London, obviously, not by any stretch of the imagination am I a millionaire, but uh, it's about th uh, three quarters of the way out from central London, but still within the M25. Um, it's a nice commutable distance. Uh, there's a train station not too far away, which I can get a train from into central London in about 25 minutes. So um, it's good. And they're redeveloping the entire area around here. And this is like one of the first stages of the development. Um, so hence why they're gonna be knocking down that building next door very soon. Um, but it means that in the next five to 10 years, this whole area is gonna be redeveloped and it's gonna be lovely by all accounts. Um, so uh, I'm kind of planning to be here at least five to 10 years. So um, that seems like a good idea and, and I will look forward to it. So you might remember back in January, the first video I did this year, it was about my um, uh, goals for the year. So in January, I said I wanted to buy my own flat this year. Uh, I want to buy a flat. <laughs> Couple of reasons for that. Firstly, uh, I was um, I was in kind of uh, centralist West London, um, just outside zone one. Um, so not too far away, but it's actually a very similar commute into work that I have now, <laughs> um, just because of the way the transport works. But I was paying a decent amount in rent every month to just rent a room in a shared house. And of course, what that means is that you're paying somebody else's mortgage. And there's nothing wrong with renting, but if you, want to not be paying somebody else's mortgage for the rest of your life, you've got to think at some point of buying somewhere. So obviously I said that in January, I didn't start thinking about buying a house or buying a flat in January. I started thinking about it quite some time ago. Uh, about three to four years ago, uh, roughly around then, I opened a help to buy ISA. A help to buy ISA is a savings account where you can put up to 200 pounds a month in, uh, and in the first month you can put 1,200 pounds in. You actually get a pretty decent rate of interest in most uh, Help to Buy ISA accounts, but the big thing about Help to Buy ISA is that the government will give you a 25% bonus when you buy your first property. Now between then and now, I've been putting in the maximum amount of money I could uh, and it's been really good, actually, because uh, that means that I've managed to, when I've bought this place, had a nice little bit uh, towards my deposit. It means that I've been able to buy furniture uh, and other things straight away, rather than having to wait until I get paid a couple more times. And it, it also means that you are on zero cash <laughs> when you've bought the house, when you've bought your flat. This is absolutely free money, right? It's a no-brainer. If you're going to buy a property in the UK, open 
are helped by ISA or a lifetime ISA. Uh, I, I haven't had one of those, so I can't really tell you about it. But what I do know is that help to buy ISAs, you can only open them before the 30th of November this year because they're going to close applications. Uh, you can put more into a lifetime ISA, but there's a few other rules you might want to read up on that. Um, but if you want to open a help to buy ISA, you can do it today all the way up to the 30th of November. Um, money saving expert Martin Lewis, you might have seen him on the telly. He says that uh, even if you aren't looking to buy a house, it's worth opening it with you know a pound, a couple of hundred pounds or however much the minimum amount you have to put in. Um, just because that means you can keep paying in until you do want to buy somewhere. If you're if you're thinking about buying your first property in the future, it's worth opening a help to buy ISA right now. One thing you do need to know though is you need a minimum of £1,600 to get the bonus. So the minimum bonus is £400. If you don't have £1,600 in there, then you can't get the bonus and therefore um, although it's a pretty good savings account, it's probably better than putting it in any other normal savings account. You get better rates of interest. So uh, it might be worth it just to be doing it for that. So that's saving and and you need to do that at least for a couple of years, I would have thought, unless you, for some reason you get uh, lots of money from your uh, family. But you do need to save money up before you attempt to buy somewhere because you need a deposit. Now, uh, when I was looking for a place, I knew I wanted to use um, another type of help to buy, the other help to buy scheme that the government runs, and that's called a help to buy equity loan. An equity loan is 20% um, of the purchase price outside of London and up to 40% of the purchase price inside London. Basically what that means is that the government own whatever the percentage is that you have been lent uh, of your purchase price. That's the percentage that the government own of your property. What that means is that when you sell it, the government will take that same percentage from um, the amount you sell it for, uh, as long as it's market value, whether that is at a profit or a loss. And if you want to pay it back, you can do so. You've got a 25 year period to do that. First five years are interest free, and then you have to pay the interest uh, only after that but you can pay off the loan in 10% chunks. It's called staircasing. Those 10% chunks are the value of the property at the time that you pay it off. So you have to get a valuation uh, and then you can pay off 10% of that valuation price, which will pay off uh, the 10% equity in your property. So if you had a 20% loan and you pay 10% equity off, then you'd still have 10% uh, loan that the government still owns and that you still have to pay off or that they take as part of the sale price when you sell the property. Right. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just telling you how I see it. So I knew that I was going to use help to buy mostly because I knew that I didn't have the cash to purchase something on the open market. Because with a help to buy, you only need a 5% deposit. Whereas on the open market, you probably need at least a 10% deposit in order for you to get a good mortgage. You can get 100% mortgages, they are available. Um, they are for very particular types of purchase. Uh, and I wouldn't suggest any first time buyers go with it. Save up your deposit, make sure you've got that first. Now on the help to buy equity loan scheme, you can only use it on new build properties. So on properties which have signed up to the government scheme and that you are purchasing as the first person to be in that property. Now, the first thing I went to was over in East London somewhere, and it was very nice. Uh, and it wasn't, it was just out of my price range, but I thought, you know, I might as well go and see it. Um, and um, it was nice and uh, I, I liked it. And I came out of the viewing of the, because it was the show flat, because when you go to see a new build, uh, often the actual place you're going to buy hasn't been built yet. So <laughs> you have to go with the show flat and, and uh, take a, a view on that. Um, but I came out of the show flat, came out, out of the viewing, and I was like, they were like, any questions? And I was like, um, I, it's not that I didn't have questions, it's just that I didn't know 
if I should be asking them or if those are the right questions or because this was a new experience to me. I'd, I'd never gone and seen uh, properties before because my mum hadn't ever moved from the place uh, where, where I grew up um, until about six or seven years ago. Um, but I was not uh, in the same area at the time. I was living in a different part of the country. So I didn't go and see the new properties with my mum. But what that means is that I, whenever I've gone and viewed properties before, it was from a rent perspective. And when you, when, when you are renting places, especially when you know you're not going to be there for any huge length of time, you know, maybe two or three years, maybe, but nothing so long that you have to think about if the place is going to be still standing in 20 years time, right? When you're going to view places to rent, all you do is look around, make sure there's not um, mould everywhere, um, make sure the room's big enough and actually what you want to do with it is the price reasonable. And if it is, probably put your offer in right then and there, because if you don't, give it the next day and somebody else will have done, especially in London. When you're viewing a property to buy, you have to ask questions. You have to ask the questions that are pertinent to you as well. So it's not just about whether um, you want curtains or you want, you know, what, what other fixtures and fittings come with it. It's about the colour of the splashback in the kitchen. It's whether the appliances are new, what the guarantees are like, what the, you know, there's all sorts of things that you would want to ask. And you just don't realise it until you've gone somewhere, viewed it, and then later, that same evening, the next day, you realise there's a lot of stuff you actually want to know. <laughs> So all those things put together, you've got so many questions. And the first time I went to see a flat to view, my idea of a question was... So anyway, um, that was very nice. Um, I phoned up mortgage advisors, all the rest of it, found out that I probably just couldn't quite afford that place. So it kind of made the decision for me, which was nice, but that's fine. That's, that's fine, that's, that's what viewing houses is all about, right? You view somewhere which is a bit better than maybe you can afford, and then you have a good idea of what you will accept. So I went to see another place over in West London, and again, very nice, um, not a bad area, but wasn't really for me. I, I, was, I thought about it for a while, uh, and then, then I saw an advert for this place, and uh, booked a viewing. Uh, came along the next day and they showed me around the show flat this was actually built now I didn't see this particular flat I saw one uh, about six floors up but it's exactly the same other than the fact that it's not on the same floor so I had a look around and I thought it was really nice there was a good amount of space um, I like the bedrooms the bathroom is great and I thought yep yeah. and and not just that the price was something I could afford number one priority <laughs> there's no point trying to buy a place if you can't afford it <laughs> so this is great i can afford it uh let's put the offer down shall we uh put my offer down for the asking price uh and you have to pay a 500 pound reservation fee with help to buy um so put my, my money down the next day and then i'm on the phone to my mortgage advisor and this let me tell you is a story all of its own. <laughs> now, uh, whenever you get a mortgage, whether it's a help to buy a mortgage or otherwise, uh, you have a valuation done by your potential mortgage provider. And that valuation is so that when they loan you the money, they know that uh, if you couldn't pay the mortgage, that they can get their money back by selling the property. Because when you have a mortgage, um, they have a thing called a charge on your property, which means although you own the title, uh, I am the only person on this title, there isn't anybody else on it, they have first refusal on you selling it. So you can only sell it with their say, I mean, I say with their say so. Um, <laughs> if you do sell it and you don't transfer your mortgage to another property and therefore your, your mortgage is secured on that property, then they can take the money from the property up to um, whatever value that you first paid, plus all the, the interest and all the rest of it. Yeah, basically, 
they have a, a say to the money that they've lent you, which seems pretty reasonable to me. But if you are on the help to buy scheme, that valuation is very important because the government will not give you this money for a property which has been overvalued. And the only way of finding out if a property is overvalued is by using the valuation from the mortgage lender. Now, my valuation came back from my first uh, mortgage lender, and I say first because this story goes on. The valuation came back and it was some 25% lower than the purchase price that I had put in at and that was being advertised at. And that meant under the help to buy rules that the developer couldn't sell me the property for more than that mortgage valuation price. What they don't do though, what they don't have to do is actually sell you the property. <laughs> so um, they refused uh, to sell the property at that price. And in many ways, that's quite reasonable. 25% lower than the, per the, the purchase price that I was willing to pay is a lot of money. Considering this is a flat in London, it's almost enough money to buy another flat in um, the Outer Hebrides, right? Is it cheap in the Outer Hebrides? You, you get my point. So the developer, quite rightly, I suppose, uh, wanted a second opinion. Uh, they wanted to have another valuation so that um, they could be sure that this valuation wasn't just a dud one, a duff one, one which really should just be for the birds. But the valuation for my second uh, mortgage lender was a bit higher. It was still lower than the purchase price I had originally um, agreed to, but it was reasonable. And the developer agreed to drop the purchase price to that valuation, uh, which meant we were able to complete within another four to five weeks. So that was good. I like to say at this point, absolutely get a mortgage advisor, 100%. That could be your bank, um, or it could be an independent uh, mortgage advisor, uh, independent mortgage broker, like I did. It's useful, especially in my situation that I found myself in. It meant that I could switch to another mortgage uh, provider without too much difficulty, and actually without any more costs to me. So that was good. So the mortgage on this property is 55% of the value. And well, this is one of the good things about help to buy is that um, with the 40% loan from the government, because I'm inside London, 40% of the purchase price uh, was a loan from the government. Uh, it was my 5% deposit, and therefore the rest of it, 55%, is the mortgage. Um, now, if you are getting a mortgage of any kind, you will know that the important thing in, in when getting a mortgage is having the best loan to value ratio that you can get. Pretty much anything below 60% and you've got the best rates. So a 55% loan to value, mortgage lenders loaning me 55% of the property versus the value of the property, means that I get the best mortgage rates. Because it's helped to buy, there's a bit different, it's slightly higher than if I, it wasn't helped to buy because, um, because that's the rules, but it's still the best that I could get, the best mortgage rates that I could get. All that means is that I'm actually paying um, substantially less than I was paying in rent for one room in a shared house, which is quite a feat. And now I realise it's not the same area, so... <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in Shepherd's Bush, by the way, because I can give that away now because I don't live there anymore. I used to live in Shepherd's Bush in West London, but uh, this is not zone two, so um, it's a bit cheaper. But nevertheless, you can understand that that means that I have a bit more spare cash. But what that does mean is that I have to save that spare cash so I can pay off my help to buy loan. I now have loads of debt, good debt, Mortgages are good debt, by the way, but I still have to pay it off at some point. So um, I'm not done saving money yet. So I hope this video was useful for you. If you uh, are thinking about buying a property uh, here in London, maybe, or anywhere in the UK, leave your comments in the comments below. Um, and I'll either direct you to places that do know, or if I've got some idea, or if it's more my experiences, then I'm happy to answer those questions. Um, if it's outside the UK, I don't know anything about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's probably about the same kind of process. Save some money, get a mortgage. Okay. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. You can do that 
down below. I make videos every week, honest. I will now because I have some time to do so rather than me when I'm buying somewhere, which gives me absolutely no time at all. I make videos more or less every single week uh, and they're usually on sex education and welfare topics. So uh, if you like that kind of thing, give me a subscribe. That'd be great. Thank you very much. And hopefully that means I shall see you next time. Bye-bye.